page in okay a very warm and pleasant morning to our respective speaker honorable delegates and all the participants you are attending or not i welcome you oh. on the day 2 of our short term listen, course listen now next guest you have to i want i welcome you on the day 2 of our short term course for today's session we will be having a session of professor k b jinesh which will be followed by the session of professor sajad ahmed loan i wish you all the participants a very happy learning experience oh before moving uh, ahead i would like to congratulate dr shah dr shah congratulations for your uh, endeavor to organize this initiative for the students across the globe I have been uh, appreciating this program all over your all the chat box on twitter and all the other media platforms are loaded with compliments thank you sir for such a great initiative now moving ahead i am privileged to introduce our uh, honorable speaker professor k b jinesh professor k b jinesh holds dual phd degree one in physics from leiden university and other in electrical engineering from twente university of technology both are in netherland he completed his msc in physics from cochin university of science and technology and bsc in physics from mahatma gandhi university in kerala professor jinesh achieved clean energy research program serp 05 grant of approximately 30 3.75 million dollars from economy development board of developing uh sorry from economy development board for developing cigs solar cells mini modules in singapore together with series and nus march 2012 he has published more than 60 research papers in both national and international journals of great repute he has also authored two books with international publications he has patented 12 novel ideas and inventions under his name i would request professor jinesh to kindly start with his session professor jinesh Professor Jinesh. Ah, uh, good morning, uh, Nikhil. Uh, uh, good morning, Professor Shah, and uh, good morning, Nikhil. Yeah, I will just uh, start my video for the time being, uh, and then I will switch it off for uh, bandwidth. <laughs> okay, okay, sir, no problem. Yeah, yeah. So you can present your screen now. Okay, okay, I will do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah so um good morning good, good morning uh, professor shah uh, and uh, yeah. nice to meet you and uh, thank you very much for uh, uh, inviting me to to give this uh, lecture here also uh, uh, thank you uh, nikhil uh, for for this uh, wonderful coordination i know that it's a uh, <laughs> difficult job <laughs> really really, really. <laughs> sir can we yeah. make a full screen Sir, can we make a full screen? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll make a, a full screen. So maybe yeah. I will just uh, switch off my video uh, so that uh, we will get. Okay. More okay. Sir. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let me just. Uh... I'm just just trying to switch it off. Uh...
It's all right. Okay, okay, I think it's all right. No problem. Yes, brain and spirit computers, electronic neurons. Yeah. Are yeah, so uh, yeah, there's a small change in the title uh, comparing to what I had uh, given before. Uh, there's actually, uh, this is a good example how our electronic uh, devices work. Yesterday evening, there was a crash of my laptop. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, it, so it means that uh, reliability of uh, electronic devices is, is, is a very good uh, topic uh, to present. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now I have to retrieve all the data. So meanwhile, uh, yes, I yeah. thought, I thought that uh, while looking at the topics, um, these are wonderful topics uh, presented uh, in these uh, two days. And um, I thought that something new other than what you have already learned in your course should be should be there. So that's why I thought that uh, uh, we can no, you are blessed, sir, Professor Janesh, you are blessed with a good combination, physics and an electrical engineering. <laughs> this is not a common. <laughs> that's good, really that's good. good. Yeah. Our, yes, our participants will be benefited by this combination, <laughs> a good combination. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Sir. I, I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's why. I, I mean, I think that's exactly. Uh, that's that's because. Uh, yeah. Um. Uh. The topic I'm I'm presenting and I'm doing research now or I'm teaching is basically semiconductor devices. And okay. their applications. So I okay. think uh, that's that's why that combination would be <laughs> good. Nice in that combination. <laughs> uh, so so once again, my uh, sincere uh, heartfelt uh, thanks uh, to Professor Shah uh, for, for inviting me and for this wonderful course. I think we, we will also um, uh, uh, organize such a such a course. <laughs> and also, so I will definitely invite you there, sir. Uh, and, uh, Thank you. Sir. Yeah. So maybe we can we can just uh, move uh, move towards the, the topic. Just basically, so uh, this top. Ah, yeah. So that basically, this topic is about, uh, uh, about brain inspired computers and why brain inspired computer computers are needed and why electronic systems are uh, required for that, especially semiconductors. As semiconductor um, technologists or scientists, what we can contribute to uh, future computational technology. Uh, that that's about about, about this topic. Okay. So. Very briefly about about the, uh, the the institution that I'm coming from. I'm coming from uh, Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology. I'm a faculty in the physics department. Uh, so this is an institute of special purpose, which means that um, uh, uh, especially for ISRO uh, space application. Uh, so we are a part of uh, Department of Space. So um, we are closely associated with uh, ISRO and uh, the uh, the graduates uh, our undergraduates from from our. Um, institute mainly go to ISRO uh, for job. Okay. Uh, so okay. especially especially BTEC students. So we have okay. uh, only three three BTEC programs there. That's only aer aerospace, um, uh, electronics, and uh, physical physical science. We have a BTEC. So only physical three science. BTEC programs are there. So we are a very small institute in that in that. <laughs> 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 But uh, blessed with a lot of uh, great people like uh, Dr. Abdul, Abdul Kalam was our first uh, chancellor, and then Professor U.R. Rao was our chancellor, and now currently uh, Dr. B.N. Suresh is our chancellor. Dr. V.K. Okay. Dathwal is our uh, director. So that's 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 all about okay. our institute. And about Good. my research group, uh, we are working on electronic materials, which means that mainly semiconducting materials, semiconductors. And what for what technologies? Uh, not for every technology. We are we are select, we have selected. Uh, two special uh, specific topics for our research and we are actually working on uh, future uh, data storage technology okay so data storage means uh, very high uh, data density uh, bit density we have to we have to achieve in future uh, for example we know when we are taking a, a, a photo uh, every day we are taking hundreds of photos or every month we are taking hundreds of photos in our mobile phones we have to store all of these Storing means uh, what? Per I mean, day, sir. Per day, every day, sir. Hundreds of photos. <laughs> yes, yes. Every day. Yeah. Every we day. are not even selective. We are not even selective. When we, when and then I was selective. teaching to my students that yeah. we were having a once a memory device which used to um, store only two photos or three photos. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's right. So when when we had this uh, film film cameras, we we were very selective uh, because yes. we had only 20, 24 films there, and uh, that yes. we had to develop it. 
but now we don't have to look for any of these things. You just click it, your photo is there. <laughs> so yes, so we, yes. are, we are basically uh, dumping a lot of uh, data uh, in our devices. And that is where a huge data density, that's just an example. For example, in, in future technologies, all the technologies, we will need a lot of data storage. So that's why we thought uh, that's, that's, uh, that's a new area uh, we, we could work on. And there, the next step of that data storage is actually something called neuromorphic technology. That is, that means uh, imitating how our brain works, uh, how neurons are connected in our in our brain. We can we, we can create artificial synapses. That means artificial neurons, and that is something which is coming up very very much. And I think um, this topic would be ideal for for uh, for this this course uh, today because uh, this is about a smart uh, future smart Still. systems. So how we can, how as physicists, we can, we can contribute to future smart systems and artificial intelligence. That's, that's a, a, a way of talking uh, uh, this, this, this topic. So this, this yeah, would correct. be what we are, we are, uh, we are talking about. So not only the, uh, the data storage, but we have to access this data very fast. So we are working on fast uh, uh, thin film transistors also, but, but of course on the research scale, okay. And we also study the materials from fundamentals. That means we are, we are using scanning tunnel microscopy or basic spectroscopy techniques to understand the material. From there, we develop devices and then we understand the device and then we try to see what, what are the applications. So this is basically what we do in our, our, our group. Good, okay. good. Having that, uh, having that introduction, we can directly jump to the topic. So we are all talking about a smaller world that is where electronic devices or semiconductor technology is is uh, very powerful and we know that uh, um, sir so uh, I, i'm just giving this talk for for the msc students so so that they can understand there may not be um, uh, too much uh, uh, technical content there i'm introducing a new yes. time, <laughs> a new time for them that's good it is good sir it's really good uh, it's really you. good yeah. Later on, later on, you will describe what are the electronic materials which you have been using for memory yeah. devices, sir. Yes. Yeah, later on. Yeah, yeah, later on. yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah. So, as, a, as an introduction, uh, you know, this is a first generation computer where, um, uh, um, so, so back to back to 60s uh, uh, and 70s, maybe also we had we had this, these computers where a room full of equipment belongs to just one computer and the applications were limited. And we know that then uh, miniaturization. So this is an example of miniaturization. You see, the second generation computer we have, we have a relatively small thing, but a larger um, uh, say um, uh, functionality is there. Uh, we can uh, we also have a, a, type a typewriter there. And you see now here we can actually see electronically what what is happening, uh, what what are the results, and we can also give inputs third generation. Fourth generation is something like that. Uh, we are uh, we are at the moment uh, we are we are using fifth generation. You know the entire room. Uh, what we see in the first picture mm. is already in that in that one screen. <laughs> okay. So um, so that that's uh, and and not only that uh, uh, the functionality of of this of this the uh, this computer is uh, is almost a hundred times than uh, what we see in this uh, first generation computer. So we have a lot of functionality incre increasing at the same time the size reduces to uh, to uh, even centimeters. So that that's uh, that's that's the that's what we generally call miniaturization. Okay, and uh, in electronic techno memory technology, you see this is a hard disk of five MB. Okay, in in 1956. So we know mm -hmm. uh, if you want to save a, a film song, a, mu a movie song, a music, uh, that's almost a five MB. Okay, so that was the capacity of uh, a hard disk in, in 1956 and uh, you can also see how it is shipped to other countries and now mm -hmm. uh, at this moment uh, you see after again after 60 years we can have we have uh, 256 gb uh, on our pump okay so that is again a, a classic uh, example of uh, how miniaturization happened in the last uh, 60 years so what is the main reason for this miniaturization but i would say the main, main reason for miniaturization is the evolution in in uh, in the transistor technology in the semiconductor technology so uh, what happens here is that we know uh, the first computer was very large because we had uh, uh, vacuum tubes there we had this uh, 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 thermionic emission it was working on the, on the principle of thermionic emission when a um, uh, filament is hot, hot electronics jump out by thermionic emission it is collected by 
an anode a post release as an anode there and there is a uh, there is a filter in between using that uh, giving a voltage to that filter we can control the electrons movement from uh, the cathode to anode and like that we we were uh, um, uh, we were using this as a transistor initially but that had a lot of uh, energy uh, wastage because we know uh, a filament which is when it is getting hot we know a, a, a earlier bulb we had this filament bulb it glows so that means there's a lot of heat generated there is a lot of light generated and we don't know, need any of these thing we need only electrons uh, flowing from uh, anode to cathode uh, cathode to anode which means that this was very less energy efficient and then uh, in 1947 uh, 47 48 um, uh, three scientists in bell laboratories bell laboratories is very famous for a lot of technologies right i mean they have a lot of nobel prizes there in bell, uh, bell labs uh, because they have introduced a quite number of quite large number of uh, technologies to the world which is still relevant and important so one of these uh, technologies is the transistor by Bardeen, Bertrain, and Shockley. Okay. This was a kind of uh, second world war emergency, the discovery of transistor. If you look at uh, Bardeen's, um, uh, 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 sorry, Bardeen's uh, Nobel lecture, you can see that uh, he's talking about uh, the second world war four times. Okay, so the, the emergency was actually to replace the entire um, uh, vac uh, uh, vacuum tubes valves by something which is more reliable. Okay, again, we are talking about the reliability of the devices. So then um, their entire research was concentrated on a, on a particular um, uh, device. They were actually working, um, studying about the conductivity of doped uh, semiconductors and doping everything. Uh, and they were uh, taking three pieces of germanium and they connected uh, like this. And one was the, uh, the, the emitter, collector, base, and they created. And this this was a, a, about, about a few centimeters, um, a couple of centimeters in size there. But uh, so this was the first transistor. Now it is still available in in, uh, in Nobel Museum. Uh, uh, we can see there. So this was the first transistor, and then uh, the planar technology or the thin film technology came. And you see uh, from this, instead of three pieces of germanium, people used uh, three layers of uh, germanium. And we can, if you can cut that layers, you can cut into different different pieces, different different devices. Okay. So this uh, this is the first IC which was ever made. I used to tell my I used to tell my PhD students that uh, I mean when you make a technology for the first time, it doesn't have to be so good in looking, okay, but it has to be good in working. You see, this is not a very hi-fi uh, transistor, but this is an IC where uh, transistor is integrated with the uh, resistors and all, but but it works, okay. So from here actually our uh, IC technology started, and. Now we know uh, the IC technology has uh, become millions and billions of transistors in, in one centimeter square. For example, you see in 1960s, the number of transistors was actually, uh, for example, if you look at this, 1962, uh, the number of transistors was around, uh, um, uh, uh, around uh, two, and then it became four, then it became, uh, 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 so it, it was like a two, eight, and then it became 32, 64, like that. So if you look at this number of technology, number of transistors, just like here, okay, this is one transistor together with a resistor here. But if you cut it into small, small transistors, every uh, every piece becomes a transistor. So like that, per centimeter square, how many uh, transistors are there that you can actually see from here? Initially, it was only a few. So uh, Gordon Moore, um, uh, who, was, who was an engineer at that time in Infineon Technologies, he uh, just calculated every year how many transistors are there in a in a in an IC. Okay, so he found that uh, it, it goes as a function of two, 10 raised to one, 10 raised to two, 10 raised to three, like that. So he made a, a rule saying that every year it is going to uh, to double, and that's that's how he calculated that every year this is going to double, <clears throat> and that's called uh, or, uh, Moore's original law. Okay, original Moore's law. That means the number of transistors per IC will double every year, but that is not. Uh, easy when when you uh, advance in technology because you see uh, cutting this transistor into two or three or four or six that's easy but cutting this transistor into one million or a billion is is difficult because there comes the problem called the process technology okay so silicon process technology has to be well developed to cut a transistor or a make a transistor in nano scale so that is a problem that's why it, it did not really go uh, along with the, the Moore's law 
and you see the process technology that means how we can cut a transistor now you see you are talking about uh, giga and uh, giga that means 10 raised to 9 transistors are there per ic okay now at, at this point uh, today there is around uh, 4 billion transistors are there in one centimeter square uh, area so that uh, technology has had to be developed that's why it fell down okay it's, it's not coping up with the, the original moore's law so currently it's uh, it's about two years uh, uh, every two years we have doubling of the transistor so that is that's uh, what is happening now and wh what's the reason the reason is that um, uh, the the transistor technology the process technology cannot cope up with the, that speed of uh, doubling the transistor because we know we need uh, Silicon technology means we need photolithography, we have etching, we have deposition techniques, we have microscopy also in between, because we have to see the transistor. Okay. Once we make it, we have to see. So that's why scanning electron microscope, electron microscopy comes into picture. So all these technology together, there was a big leap in the technology, and now it is slowly coping up with the, that, that slope. Okay. The slope is almost be becoming the same thing. Okay. So, but what is, the, what is the importance of Moore's law is that it predicts what should be the size of the, the transistor in the coming years, or what should be the technology, what should be the technology to be developed in the process technology, okay, the silicon fabrication technology to cope up with the Moore's law. So we have a mile, uh, milestone there. So we have to achieve, achieve that milestone every year. That is uh, what is called uh, International Technology Roadmap, okay, International Technology Roadmap for Semiconductors, ITRS. So if you just uh, Google it, you will get uh, ITRS uh, uh, of the last year. You, you can download the PDF and you can see what are the technological challenges for the coming 10 years uh, to address to, you know, uh, so that we can, we can slowly come back to Moore's law. Okay, so according to Moore's law, when miniaturization happens, when uh, that means every transistor becomes smaller and smaller when we, when we have a number of transistors in increases. Okay, so this is the present Moore's law almost. Okay, so every two years, uh, uh, it increases, the number of transistors increases. So the, the, this is the prediction and the technology, how it goes. Okay, so this is a, a transistor. Transistor means, you know, there's a, a, a source there, there's a drain there, so from source to drain through the interface of, of, this, uh, uh, um, um, uh, of this gate and, and uh, the body or the, or the semiconductor, electrons are going this way from source to drain, electrons are going through the interface, which is called the channel and that channel, uh, the length of that channel is the name of the transistor. For example, if you say that 10 micrometer, um, uh, uh, 10 micrometer channel, which means that it, it, uh, it's, it's a 10, uh, the channel length is 10 micrometer. But you see, depending upon the, uh, the, the prediction by Moore's law, we are actually coming down in the, the channel size, which means that the, the size of the transistor becomes smaller and smaller every year. And this is a little older estimate because you see, uh, as per Moore's law, 2019 itself, we should have five nanometer technology. Okay, that means five nanometer means uh, you can you can see five nanometer means it is only ten times the atomic distance between a, a lattice distance. Okay, ten atoms in a lattice. So we are almost approaching the possible size of uh, uh, the minimum minimum size of a transistor. Okay, so so uh, but that is not exactly followed uh, now in 2021 or 20 uh, last year the technology we achieved was uh, seven nanometer in commercially okay so i think the next uh, speaker would uh, talk more about that so uh, so we'll we'll uh, we'll stop uh, about that discussion there okay so basically 45 nanometer technology means the distance between source and drain is only 45 nanometer less than 100 silicon atoms are there 22 nanometer means less than 40 silicon atoms are there. 5 nanometer means less than 10 silicon atoms are there. To give a, 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 a size comparison, we know the, the most famous uh, thing in the world at the moment is a virus, right? So the size of that virus is almost uh, 40 nanometer. And that is the size of uh, a four, the channel length of a, of a transistor, uh, almost uh, say 45 nanometer was uh, in almost in 2008. So 2010, say, at that time, the size of a transistor was the size of uh, a cold virus, uh, which is uh, yeah around 40 nanometer. Okay, now it is seven nanometer. Seven nanometer technology is already turning out. Okay, yeah, seven nanometer technology. So, what is the next generation? So we said up to sir, uh, Professor Janesh, Professor Janesh, sir. Yes, sir, sir, sir. Professor Janesh, Professor Janesh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, sir. Hello. Uh, Hello. Uh, sir, 
I, I can hear that. <laughs> the audio was not on. Uh, probably, if you can go a last slide back again. Oh, sorry, sorry. So yeah. people are writing that they could not hear. Oh, is it? Is it? Audio was not connected, sir. Last um, slide. Last slide. Uh, okay. Last. Last. Hello. Uh, uh, hello, sir. Um, am I audible now? Am I audible now? Professor Dinesh. Uh, sir, am I audible? Try to reconnect it, sir. Um, yeah, yeah. Am I am I audible now? Sir, try to reconnect it. Yeah, yeah. I reconnected. Yeah. Uh, am I audible now? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. 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 Yes. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, sir, if I am not audible, yes, uh, please interrupt me. Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. So I was telling that. Uh, um, yeah, I was telling that. Uh, this is this is how. Very sad. I'm I'm audible, right? Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I was telling that uh, as per Moore's law, this is how the miniaturization happens. Audio key problem has sir. Audio key okay. problem. Um, yeah, sir. Sir, some of them are saying that it's audible. So I don't know. Do not know what happened to this one, sir. Yeah, you are audible to everyone. Those who have, don't have a good connection, th those are having yeah. problem. Problems. So, a problem is not at so my you, side, right? Yeah, sir. You please carry on, sir. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. So I was telling that uh, this is this is how the uh, Moore's law predicts uh, uh, how the, the 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 technology will come down, and finally we are almost uh, at the. The atomic level. Okay, five nanometer is less than five silicon atoms. We know the uh, lattice distance uh, between uh, in, in a crystal. If you take an X-ray diffraction or something, uh, the distance between two atomic planes is of the order of. Uh, uh, I think uh, Professor Fry is calling me. Uh, let me just uh, just talk to him. और और वहां ये और रिकनेक्ट करना पड़ेगा क्योंकि थोड़ा सा अभी ये बहुत अच्छा चल रहा था नाउ ऑन दिस स्लाइड इट हैज स्टार्टेड क्रिएटिंग ट्रबल ओके आई विल स्पीक अप अ लिटिल लाउडर बिकॉज़ आई थिंक सम ऑफ अस कैन नॉट हियर व्हाट आई एम सेइंग so just interrupt me um, anyway, if it is not uh, audible okay so i was telling that uh, yeah i mean um, now uh, i was just comparing what is 40 nanometer for example 40 nanometer technology means the the channel length of this transistor is of the order of 40 nanometer now we know the the uh, okay okay thank you so the audio is fine so the size of that channel length is of the order of a virus okay a cold virus um, uh, um, so that that is the, about the size of a transistor so just uh, for a comparison okay so i was telling that uh, next uh, we we had already discussed uh, five, five generations of computers what is the sixth generation okay sixth generation computer is basically uh, based on artificial intelligence okay we are still at the at the introduction so we know we are using artificial intelligence on a daily basis and without even we knowing uh, it is in our life every day because okay, so when when you type in google uh, just artifi it, it already gives all possible combinations of uh, uh, artificial uh, intelligence and you see artificial intelligence is the first thing that comes into into the um, uh, uh, into the picture okay so uh, when you write something or when you use uber or when you use uh, um, uh, uh, swiggy or any 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 uh, uh, any program to order food or or anything or you order something in amazon it actually gives you a lot of suggestions where to look for what to look for everything okay so that is an example of uh, uh, of artificial intelligence okay so uh, the system will suggest you okay that uh, what what to do what to look for and i will give you one example so because of this for example all kind of search, search engines um uh, all all type of search engines for example uh, or, or google like, like a google or uh, other systems like uh, for example uber they are doing a lot of research in the artificial intelligence this is uh, from uber research okay this this slide okay i hope you can still hear me uh, if uh, then uh, yes sir uh, if sir, it's not you can, can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay 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 
thank you, thank you. So you, you look at these pictures. Okay, these are pictures, they're beautiful faces, but these are people who do not exist. Okay, so this, this is a creation of artificial intelligence. Okay, so you see how perfectly these, these faces are there, but you can actually see imperfections and I will, I will, I will tell why it is. So this is from, again, uh, a, a website called thispersondoesnotexist.com. Okay, this is going to be our future. <laughs> we can we can we can create uh, movie uh, heroes and uh, movie actors and in future without uh, 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 with people who are not existing. So uh, you see, this is uh, by Philip Wang. He's a software engineer at Uber because you see Uber is a well connected network. They use artificial in artificial intelligence uh, quite low, quite lot. Okay. Now what I'm saying is that. Uh, how this is created, you can actually go to this site and see later on. They, they have collected millions of faces, okay, the features of millions of faces as a database. And from that database, uh, using artificial intelligence, they, they collect, they combine faces, face properties. For example, we know uh, with the ethnicity, the face changes. An Indian face does not look like a Chinese face. It's a different and American or European face is different. So using that uh, ethnic, ethnically collected uh, face combinations they have created this uh, uh, these faces of course there are wrong wrong combinations also which uh, looks like uh, de uh, demons but <laughs> but of course there are this, this is a good part of, of of the story so you can actually see for example you look at the earring okay this earring and this earring they are different uh, look at uh, here this earring and this earring are different she has an earring here she does not have an earring here and that that comes from uh, you see this imperfections of uh, combinations okay one ear is from one person another ear, ear is from the combination of another person so this is this is how now future intelligence uh, is 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 going to be okay just one example okay and the problem here is that to make a brain like function into a computer that is an enormous task okay because we are talking about intelligence and we are talking about artificial intelligence so what is the problem if you want to create uh, uh, this you look at this example okay if you want to simulate some of the cortical functions some of the cortical function means uh, some Fun some functions how brain works of a cat's brain. Okay, IBM had to use uh, um, uh, 1.5 uh, uh, lakhs of uh, computers. Okay, so um, uh, one lakh for for 47,000 co computers they had to use with the 144 terabit memory. Then only um, a, some functions of a cat's brain could be uh, uh, emulated. So our brain is such a, such a such a such a complicated thing. Okay, so. Brain on silicon is a future ambition, and we uh, and people have already started that. Okay, so now the problem with the current uh, computer technology will go a little faster here. Otherwise, we won't finish it. So we have an input device. This is our com normal computer. This is called von Neumann architecture. What is this architecture? This is the initial computer architecture we are still following. Okay, we have input device. We have a mouse or we have a keyboard. We give some information to the uh, to the system, and uh, it access from the memory unit using a bus control and using the bus control, the, the information goes to the, the central processing unit, CPU. And from there, after processing it, it gives, gives us the output. Okay, so if you give an instruction only at a time, it can it can take only one instruction, okay, because of the, um, uh, because of the uh, bus control. Okay, so one instruction at a time is uh, only is possible in a normal computer. That is called the von Neumann architecture. And that's called that, one instruction at a time is is called a von Neumann bottleneck. But look at our our brain. Our brain, we are we are doing a lot of things at the same time. We we are uh, reading, uh, we are uh, understanding, we are processing things in our brain. Our, our body functions are working. So many things are going on at a time in our brain. So how this parallel computing is happening in our brain, which is not possible in a normal computer. Okay. So um, now. Uh, just uh, just uh, 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 an uh, analogy between a comparison between human brain and computer. Just 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 to show. Okay, the memory power uh, of a human brain is uh, is very high. It's uh, around thousand terabyte memory we have in our brain. Computer normally a normal computer is only sixty four GB. Okay, normally, a bit rate. If you talk about uh, internet uh, speed, this is a uh, hundred Mbps. We know it's uh, maybe 256 Mbps for a song, uh, which, which with a very high quality and all. But uh, at a, a brain can have almost uh, one to thousand trillion uh, bits per second. It can process. You see, it's a, a, a natural phenomenon, but uh, but it has uh, so much uh, efficiency. Now the processing energy. If you process one bit, if you 
remember one bit in our uh, our brain it it uh, spends only 10 femtojoule 10 raised to minus 15 joule only but uh, uh, 10 raised to minus 12 a joule okay 10 uh, 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 10 into 10 raised to minus 12 joule is process is used by a computer that's electronically okay so if you take one synaptic connection what is synaptic connection uh, if you take a neuron there are thousands of connections one neuron is connected to thousands of other neurons okay so if you take only one connection the bit uh, processing is very small but if you take all the connections of a neuron we, we get this very very large bit rate okay so this is how it, it works this is a neuron these are uh, uh, so uh, uh, this is the axon axon is there this is the central part where the nucleons and everything we don't have to go for biology here just just to just uh, telling how it is working now you see every uh, hand is uh, it's called a synapse is connected to other neurons so this place is called the synaptic connections okay and people are now thinking whether we can create this using semiconductors using transistors and capacitors that's where we are actually going to work on so if you if you take this part okay if, if you take this connection this is one hand of uh, one arm of a, of, a, of a neuron which is connected to another arm of another neuron so this is how information is passing through our neurons with the electrically okay electrically this, these are ions electric uh, this is charged ions so exchange of ions happens like sodium potassium calcium uh, sulfur this kind of ions uh, exchange from here to here and or the exchange of ions uh, are, are the reason why we have uh, information from one neuron to another neuron uh, is, is happening okay uh, i will not go to the details of them usually how it happens is that suppose you touch your hand and that that uh, suddenly you know that uh, a, a, a touching is there so what happens suddenly a pulse a train of a voltage pulse goes to your neuron and that voltage pulse comes here because of that voltage pulse some calcium ions will slowly enter inside okay that's why calcium sodium all these things are important for our brain function okay because these are all called calcium gates so calcium goes inside these are called uh, synaptic vesicles with switches inside okay. so then uh, uh, i'm just uh, showing how it works and how we are going to translate this into a semiconductor okay so now this uh, when calcium goes inside why calcium goes inside because we we got a pulse of uh, voltage because uh, we have from the sense we have uh, a pulse uh, um, of voltage which is called action potential um, action potential comes okay for example if you see something you uh, at the back side of your uh, 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 eyeball there there are optical neurons they will when light falls on these optical neurons suddenly an action potential goes to your brain okay and when that voltage pulses these are action potential means voltage pulses pulses of voltages so when they come this uh, calcium here will Please go inside and this this uh, this calcium goes inside they will attract uh, these this kind of bubbles towards oh, yeah, here cool. and then what happens these bubbles will open up there are something called neurotransmitters and uh, they, they will go to the next 10 neurons okay, okay then this action potential is again created in the next yeah, new, neuron we'll so that, that is how electric charge or electric potentials are transferred from one neuron to another neutron a neuron so we don't have to care about all these things you just uh, take care uh, one fact here is that the charges are transferred from one neuron and charges are coming to another neuron uh, giving a action potential or a pulse uh, change here so um yeah so this is called the uh, uh, pre synapse that means from here the voltage pulse is coming these neurons are uh, neurotransmitters are coming here they transmit their ions here so this get a get a, a, a voltage pulse the same voltage pulse is created here because of the cha the, the ion ch uh, channel transfer here and um now what happens if you if you see a person for example you just to see him for a second and then you don't see him anymore after a few hours you will forget the face of that person why because just one action potential one type of action potential came some uh, some neurotransmitters transmitted here and slowly what happens this connection becomes fading away so you you won't remember that but if you see that person for days and days okay that means you are continuously watching that person what will happen you uh, uh, this action potential keep on happening and then what happens more and more proteins will come here they will strengthen this this connection okay so these connections are strengthened some of these connections are strengthened when you see somebody or when you hear something or when you uh, look at something uh, that uh, connections are strengthened okay so that means if you repeat 
um, an event, uh, you can get memory better. Okay, that's how things are happening. These are the action potentials. You see voltage pulses coming to the brain. These are called action potentials. Okay, when you see or when you touch or when you taste something or when you smell something, these kind of action potentials will come to your brain. And uh, if you, when you smell, for example, an apple, you know that it's an apple because you, uh, that memory is already there. Okay, so uh, when it is correlating, you know that it's an apple. For example, this is how things are happening here. If you see somebody or if you hear something for very several, several times, okay, number of pulses increasing, that means several, several times you remember it. And you, then you stop seeing it or stop hearing it, what happens, you will slowly forget it. Okay, so you remember the more times you see or, uh, or, or, uh, uh, or sense something, you remember that uh, very well. But if you don't see that in, in time, it will slowly fade away. This is how our brain or neurons work. Okay. So, okay, I, I'll just uh, uh, skip that part. Okay, this, this part was skipped. Yeah, so, okay. so, so um, 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 uh, imitating how brain works or neuron works in, in, uh, in, in computing, that is called uh, neuromorphic computing. Neuromorphic means neuron morphic means uh, imitating. So we are emulating or we are imitating how neurons work uh, for the computation that's called neuromorphic computers. Okay, so, um, then how how we can translate this entire uh, process into into uh, electronic technology? We are we are concentrating at this part. Okay, where, uh, where is this is uh, uh, um, where where neurotransmitters are, are transmitted, and then we have the 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 uh, the memory strengthened up. We can simply take a capacitor. Okay, so this is a capacitor. This is this is a hafnium oxide. Um, this a dielectric. This is a dielectric called a hafnium oxide. Um, so there are a lot of questions coming up. I will answer them um, uh, in short uh, soon after this, this talk. Okay. So so this is a capacitor, and now you see. Suppose this electrode. We know a capacitor is nothing but two electrodes uh, on either side, and we have a dielectric in between. And this dielectric has a lot of manganese there. Okay. Manganese doped half neum oxide. Now what happens if you apply manganese are positive charges? I mean positive ions here. So now uh, suppose this is our one electrode. This is the other electrode. And we apply negative here with respect to here. Okay, so this part is negative. If you are applying one one pulse here, what will happen? This manganese ions will be attracted towards the negative side because they are positive. Okay, this, this positive ions will move slightly towards the uh, the the negative side, negative electrode. So we are applying a, a pulse uh, with the negative here. Manganese ions will slightly move here. Now you see we have made uh, this more this distribution more uniform in the structure comparing to here. Here, there was no magnetic ions here, but you see more ions here. So, with respect to this one, this is a different. This has a different conductivity. Now, okay. So now, the more pulses you apply here, what happens? More and more ions will redistribute. That will change the conductivity of of the system. So it is like more and more pulses come he, coming here. We are actually changing the conductivity of this uh, neuro uh, 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 this connection. Okay, like that. If you are just uh, using a, a, a capacitor uh, where you have mo uh, mobile ions are there, you can create the, exactly the same structure here. Now let us see whether this will work like a neuron. Okay, so you see, uh, people have done this, this, and this is the results they are getting. You see, the more pulses you are giving, it works exactly like a neuron. Okay, you see, uh, the the memory is increasing, and after this, after applying several pulses, you stop it or you give an opposite pulse. What happens? It it remember it it forgets whatever it remember. So comparing to our neuron, our biological neuron, by applying negative pulses, you can also forget things. Okay, that would be very very uh, very good if uh, bio biology can happen because you are, you press a button, you forget certain things. Okay, so if you don't want to remember anything, you can just uh, press a button, you will forget that thing. <laughs> okay, so but, but this is electronic. We need more more and more uh, what called uh, functions in electronic uh, 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 transmitters. Okay, so this is. Uh, the uh, more and more pulses you give, conductivity increases, but you stop it or you give reverse pulses, what will happen? They will slowly come back. If you stop it, what happens here? Don't apply any voltage here. This will slowly come back because now we have forced these ions to move this towards this side by electric field. But now what, what happens? If you stop that, they will slowly come back to their more stable position, equilibrium positions. You will lose the memory slowly. Okay, so this, uh, this is an ideal case. Another material systems is, for example, silicon with the silver ions in it. So silicon, uh, uh, silver doped silicon also shows very high uh, neuromorphic behavior. Okay, so basically this is 
the behavior we check whether uh, it is it will work as a neuro a neuron artificial neuron or not we give more and more pulses and see whether the current is changing and then we re give reverse pulses and we see whether the current is reducing back and then if you give again positive pulses it will go up if you give negative pulses it will come back okay so like that you can remember and you can forget things just like a normal neuron okay biological neuron you can you can mini miniaturize this device uh, to even a uh, nanometer scale by just uh, you see this is an electron this is another electron and this material is just uh, jammed in between so this is a neuro uh, an, an artificial neuron for example if you have another another uh, electrode here there also you can create another uh, neuron so a array of neurons you can you can basically create okay so and just uh, giving a, a comparison between a, uh, a silicon neuron you see this is uh, this is how a silicon neuron works and this is how, how, uh, how a real biological neuron works okay so you see more and more uh, you see somebody you remember him or her more and then you uh, you don't do anything it will slowly uh, fade away you forget that uh, that what whatever you have remember just like that give more and more pulses you have more memory but uh, you just uh, stop it or give reverse pulses you you can raise that memory okay so in terms of synaptic weight means uh, what is the person percentage of uh, of the memory you are increasing with the, with respect to pulses this is how an electronic uh, device works this is how an actual neuron works okay you see uh, very very um, nicely comparable okay so we are almost there so now what are what are the semiconductors we are using for that there are a lot of things are there for example it's a, this is a ccm uh, lead bromide quantum dots uh, with a self assi assembly there so these are self assembled uh, uh, quantum dots on a substrate this is a single quantum dot and what people did is that they fabricated a transistor with it so this layer was was the active layer of that transistor and then you just this is a source this is a drain you measure what is the current passing through it and this part contains a lot of nanoparticles so the gate also contains a nanoparticles okay so oh, sorry in in this case the uh, this quantum dot is given in the gate part okay so this is an active material it's a pentacene so it's a semiconducting um, uh, uh, polymer and these nanoparticles are uh, or the quantum dots are embedded in the gate so that you can again create a, a three terminal or a transistor neuron using this one at the same time you can actually give light also so it, this will act like a optical neuron also that's what they have done Use, using uh, using light pulses they have increased the memory and with the uh, applying voltage at the gate they erase it so creating uh, optical memory means uh, uh, just like our um, uh, neurons in our in our uh, uh, eyes uh, uh, these are these are these are for example this pentacene is sensitive to light okay so when you shine light the conductivity increases but at the same time uh, more and more light falls you, you can increase the conductivity and then you stop the light it, it will again slow, slowly go back because because uh, the recombination of these uh, uh, carriers will happen okay so so this is how optical memory also you can create okay and uh, yeah this is another optical memory and what uh, they have also shown an application of that you can actually read uh, uh, data from here with a, with an uh, uh, with very unclear uh, data you can actually recognize so de data recognition is possible that means in, in uh, people have already developed algorithms using neuromorphic systems where you know the capture files right i mean ca ca capture uh, that means when you do internet banking you have to give a, 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 a capture word to show that you you are not a robot but now nowadays uh, neuromorphic al algorithms can automatically de detect uh, from uh, from a mess, messed up uh, uh, environment they can read even better than human uh, human eyes they can read and identify what is the um, uh, what are the letters there and it can be um, yeah so that's a threat also for a, for a, for example for security for online security that's a threat so that means the the cryptography also has to increase okay its level but but uh, that's how the technology develops so they have created artificial eyes also for example you see this light the, this pattern goes to an array of uh, uh, neuromorphic devices and then it is connected to all type of uh, combinations of uh, electronic devices with an op amp and then output comes so we can recognize what is the uh, what exactly is is is, uh, is the optical image okay so using this only they, they have shown that cryptography uh, I, I mean i mean uh, the uh, capture files or um, embedded files or, or or images you can read out very well 
okay very easily i will just uh, um, uh, stop maybe somewhere here and what we have done is that we created one of the smallest um, uh, artificial neuron that, that was actually using uh, mol molybdenum disulfide quantum dots and we used a scanning tunneling microscope for that so what we did is that we just measured the current uh, the tunneling current through uh, the quantum dot uh, through a scanning tunneling microscope and then we shined a light uh, when light falls on it uh, more and more charge carriers will be developed and then uh, the, the the current the tunneling current will increase because a lot of electrons and holes are generated here you will get a l larger tunneling current if you shine light on it so this is a we at the at the uh, in if you look at the literature this is one of the smallest uh, neuron ever created because the size of this quantum dot is only 3 to 4 nanometer only okay so uh, i hope i am still audible somebody says yes then I, I'll, I'll just continue okay thank you so so this is a quantum dot and we just measured the tunneling current through it using a scanning tunneling microscope and then if you shine light more and more uh, charges come here they can tunnel more and more tunneling will be here so if you okay this is uh, this uh, so instead of a continuous light we can we give pulses of light okay that will that will show you it, it will resemble the action potentials but in an optical way so we give pulses of light we create uh, uh, pulses of uh, charge density variations here that we can measure using a scanning tunneling microscope and so we, for, we, we actually use an um, Arduino controlled uh, LED setup for that. So this is the scanning tunneling microscope. These are the quantum dots on, on graphite substrate. And then we measure, if you if you give pulses of light, what will happen? We actually see that, okay, this is uh, just a graphical representation. We uh, see that, for example, if you give, just give one pulse, you see it, it increases the conductivity because a lot of charges are created, charges are developed, and these charges will recombine each other, okay, to again, to go to the to the neutral level because now this is the time taken for the charges to recombine okay so if you uh, put an exponential here you will get uh, this time this this many seconds so that that time is the time taken for these charges to to neutralize so before the if before it neutralizes if you give another pulse here it will go slightly higher and when it decomposes before it completely goes down if you get if you give the next uh, pulse it will again increase so we can increase the 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 charge density there and that is the memory we are we are actually talking about okay so it, it slowly now you see a lot of noise is there because this is just a single quantum dot it is with a with a uh, tunneling microscope so noise will be there okay so we can actually see that uh, this uh, memory goes up and up so it behaves like a uh, like a neuron okay you can also he see here the memory goes up and that also depends upon how far you are actually giving these pulses. If you give pulses continuously, you see the memory goes up. If you, if the pulses are slightly away, that means uh, 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 that means you you see it after forgetting only. Yeah, after forgetting only, you give the next pulse. Then you see it. You don't remember anything. It is like you see something, and and after forgetting only, you see again something. So it, it looks like a fresh thing to you. Okay, you don't do, you don't even remember it. But biological brain does not work like that. It works like uh, you see someone and forget him or her, and after after a long while you see him him or her again. You still try to recognize. Oh, I have seen him or her some somewhere, and that memory still remains in your brain. That's called long time memory, because uh, you just remember something and it uh, it it is stored in your brain as a long time memory. That's why when you see somebody. After even after forgetting that person, when you see somebody, you try to recall him. So there are terms called long term memory, short term memory. All these things we can actually emulate or uh, imitate using uh, uh, semiconductor technologies. Okay. So yeah, I think uh, that's it for the time being. And how we are going to uh, to improvise it into a technology, and that's called the crossbar architecture. Crossbar means you see this is one uh, say a gold line or a metal line. This is another metal line, this is another line of metal. And in between you have these materials, whether it is a quantum dot or whether it is a, um, a silver dot to silicon, any, any materials uh, are there. This, these are the active materials. And then you just make cross structures also. So you see, if I want to program this device, suppose I want to program this device, I give voltage across this line and this line. You see, if I give across this one and this one, the voltage is across this one. I can program this one. If I want to program this one, for example, I give voltage across this line and the middle line. So you, you get a pro, this one program. No, all others will be 
uh, unaffected. Okay, so like that, you can actually create, uh, you can selectively program devices, and that means you can selectively uh, 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 control uh, every neuron in the system. So this is called the crossbar. Okay, RERAM is another um, uh, term which is uh, which is very close to it. That's a resistive random access memory. By changing, by looking at the resistive state of this material, we can you can basically uh, see whether it is a uh, high resistance or a small resistance that also can be used for data storage okay so that in ta in that terms it's uh, it's called riram but this is the how the crossbar architecture comes crossbar means bars are crossing so these are the uh, even now in our uh, pen drive this, this structure is used okay but with a uh, but with the transistors in between okay so these are world world lines and bit lines you can program individual uh, neurons or devices using this structure okay and uh, already people have shown that even uh, you see eight nanometer devices, uh, the, the crossing uh, is actually eight nanometer by, by eight nanometer. So the area is 64 nanometer square. So even eight nanometer technology has been developed already. So these are all coming up. This is something what we developed in our lab. This is only 256 uh, um, uh, bits. Okay, it's not even kilobits. It's on two, 256 bits we have created. And uh, you first create these kind of parallel lines then deposit the material which uh, which is showing neuromorphic characteristics and then deposit the the perpendicular lines so every device uh, you select any line you can select that particular device okay that's how it it works okay so like that parallel neurons you can create and then you can just start with the brain like computing there okay so this is all about transistors and uh, capacitors like that you can even uh, you can you, you can deposit three dimensional structures and that is the key to um, brain like computing because now you see neurons are now connected three dimensionally so you can actually get a three dimensional structure okay so i think i i'll, I'll just stop it here because it's almost a time for the next uh, session i don't have to sell mm -hmm. I, I don't have to say how far we have reached uh, uh, by artificial intelligence okay even the so we you know sophia right so sophia is the first uh, humanoid to get citizenship, so they are, yeah. <laughs> she can to Professor Dinesh. Hello, Dinesh, sir. Hello. Sir, if you if you if you want, you can carry on because uh, the next session we won't be having as the speaker is not available for today <laughs> okay okay uh, yeah, uh, uh, you yeah. Carry on i i, I, actually, five, I was i was actually uh, running right, like in a race so <laughs> i think i <laughs> <laughs> no sir professor janesh professor janesh yes sir we can have uh, we can have, professor janesh professor janesh yeah. yeah is it not possible that we can have deliberations with students students will ask a question and will start absolutely, absolutely. deliberating that actually, will be that's fine. That will be better. That's better. Yeah. That's better. That's yeah, better. That's yeah. yeah. Neklesh, oh. one by one, one by one, you start uh, taking the questions and give it to Sai. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Yeah. So yeah. This, uh, one by uh, one. Uh, yeah. In, in uh, two, two more slides, I will just uh, finish it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Please, sir. Uh, please. Uh, please. Yeah. Please. So, so this this technology, how this technology is developing, is based on you see a lot of electronics is there. Lot of physics is there because every technology develops with uh, physics uh, in, in it. Uh, sem now, uh, semiconductor technology means uh, semiconductor physics in it and engineering in it because you need all type of architecture, all all type of electronics components have to be integrated. So yeah, all yeah. these things come together yeah, to yeah. form a technology. Okay, so yeah, um, yeah you also know that uh, um, this humanoid can uh, can have around uh, sixty-two fa facial ex expressions. It can answer questions. Okay, so we are at the preliminary level of uh, intelligence. Okay, and I I get a lot of questions when I give this kind of talks that whether full consciousness like a like a biological consciousness is possible to develop yeah, yeah, yeah. my my simplest answer already i will tell you that i don't know okay <laughs> because uh, uh, even biological consciousness how it is developed is a very very complicated question okay because we take decisions we um, we can give input and it can analyze things and give an output whether you can call it an intelligence is still too early to answer that question okay so in this technology 
we have memory technology and transistor technology we can actually have ideal okay let's say uh, riram or neuromorphic technology that can be fluctuating devices when you make some devices in your lab it is actually very difficult to get a very good device okay you get a mostly crappy devices which will not work like a, uh, like you want but that that also you can actually use fluctuating riram okay fluctuating device which are bad devices so uh, if if you have a very good uh, device you can actually do ultra fast computation you can do artificial synapse by that you can do quantum bit processing even okay because if the devices are very small we have shown that uh, there there are quantum fluctuations or uh, uh, or quantum uh, resistance comes into picture okay so that also is possible um okay i am uh, i don't know i'm getting a, a annotation request do have to approve accept it? that decline that uh, okay 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 yeah so you you can do also quantum bit processing okay so from that you can actually uh, do ultra high density uh, uh, device data storage you, you can get neuromorphic chip uh, by the way uh, the current state stage of neuromorphic technology is that there are a uh, lot of uh, uh, new um, uh, for example technologies are coming up for example people have shown that using neuromorphic te technology uh, you can solve differential equations you can uh, you, you can even make uh, devices which follow your instruction or uh, uh, people recently have made a bicycle or cycle which will follow you, you if you are walking the cycle will come come behind you okay and so if you want to just uh, uh, walk with your cycle after cycling after a while if you want to just walk you just uh, walk in front the cycle will follow you okay like that now you know uh, uh, the uh, driverless cars are coming so technology advancement because the drive, driverless car means automatic cars okay completely automatic cars they um, they have to assess where is the traffic jam where there is a uh, how to increase the speed where to increase the speed because if you increase the speed in a traffic jam there's a chance of collisions so you have to uh, 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 the car has to assess whether traffic jam is there uh, or uh, is it safe to increase the speed when it has to uh, decelerate or when it has to put the brakes on all these things uh, uh, it has to assess by itself there is the intelligence part comes okay the sensor the proximity sensor all these things will give you uh, information about where is your, the car behind you or uh, at, at what distance uh, there is a car in front of you but uh, the system has to take a decision where to accelerate where to put the accelerator or where to put the brake okay if it is just interchanged okay where, where you have to put a brake if it is accelerating you know what happens so that correct assessment and intelligence is needed here and that's exactly where neuromorphic thing will come up okay so you can see a lot of uh, neuromorphic applications in future okay so so from physics to artificial intelligence this is how we use uh, simple capacitors or transistors can be used to create uh, artificial neurons now if it is fluctuating what what happens you can use it for cryptography and you can use uh, use it for uh, safety functions like your uh, pin code en encrypted in your bank card for example it is called f physically unclonable functions you can one only one function once at a time you can create like that you can create and with the flexible electronics you can even create uh, intelligent display technologies and uh, wearable electronics you can make Wa wearable electronics are very important especially for space applications okay because you cannot carry all these things uh, to space for example, I will just tell you one example. Uh, when you are, see, our heart is, is designed for living on Earth. Okay, it is not, uh, why it is like that? What I'm saying is that our heart rate, heart pumping, the, that system is uh, designed for Earth, means we have a gravi gravitational force there, which means that it has to exert more force to, towards the brain because it's against going against the gravitation. And uh, while uh, towards our legs or lower part of the body, it, it, it needs less pressure only because because of gravitation. But if you go to a zero gravity uh, place like in space, you see it's totally different because uh, their gravity gravitation does not uh, is, is is very less, right? So at that place, if you pump more blood to the, to the brain, a lot more blood will go to the brain. So the heart will dilate or the function of the heart becomes totally different, uh, and it it will it will cause even death. Uh, because because uh, I mean that that's uh, something which is very um, 
possible to happen for uh, astronauts because uh, heart does not function just like uh, like like on earth okay so because of the lack of gravity you have heart will still function like more blood to brain and less blood to uh, to legs but what happens in in zero gravity place um, there there is no gravity to compensate that so really a lot of blood will go to the brain it can cause stroke it can cause uh, heart failure okay so you have to continuously monitor the the heart rating a heart rate um, uh, while going uh, in, a, in into the space because you are going against a uh, gravity uh, you are accelerating like anything uh, when you are going up and even in space you have to monitor continuously how the heart is uh, functioning and not only that if the heart is not functioning very well it has to immediately uh, give an alarm uh, to the uh, the person and, and if possible to a doctor or uh, some expert which actually means that the system has to tell okay you are you are not in a good position you have to take some some measure to 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 be healthy so those kind of things are uh, examples of wearable electronics in in for example in in space but for example your smart watch is a very good example of a wearable electronics where it also tells what is the heart rate okay so all these things you can actually use uh, neuromorphic technologies so quantum cryptography can be an an uh, spin off of uh, this uh, uh, cryptography technology okay so like that you can actually domestic applications also can be there so which means that uh, memory technology together with the thin film transistor technology it can give give you out a lot more things for future okay especially for artificial intelligence applications so i think uh, okay uh, um yeah i think that that's fine so we'll we'll stop of the talk here so if there are questions now we can we can discuss it so i hope that uh, even though it was uh, with a lot of speed i i, I hope you you got so, at least something a gist of uh, a, a, a feeling of what is going on in this field yes sir yes it was very informative uh, niklesh uh, no, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, sir uh, dr janesh yes sir, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah congratulate so good so so mm, good <laughs> thank you thank uh, you sir yeah, i'll see you on phone call to arrange few more lectures on this <laughs> really good <laughs> we really really good. Go. you can oh, yeah. see i watched the whole video i watched the whole video yeah, it is really very good nice talk yeah. and then we are receiving feedback also very informative very good so uh, we'll be slowly moving towards the questions neklesh yes, one sir. by one one by one okay sir, one by sir. one yeah. so first yeah one uh, the question comes from arun kumar br could we able to manufacture semiconductors or transistors in the size of neuron yes of course because neurons are not small okay neurons uh, if you take one one uh, neuron it is of the order of micrometers you can see a neuron in a normal uh, a little powerful optical microscope but you so, see we have gone to 7 nanometer or 5 nanometer in technology which means that we are several orders of magnitude several thousands of order uh, thousands of times lower than a neuron at this stage so that is the advantage of the technology because uh, when one in our brain there are millions of neurons but if you have the size of a brain we can we can create uh, um, even say several uh, several million times uh, information uh, with our current technology okay so neurons are not small neurons are uh, micron size we can we can we can see them in, in normal microscopes okay yes sir so next question is from shiny does artificial okay. intelligence have the abilities to just replicate patterns or will it develop the ability to create new ideas and laws in concept of physics in future uh the first part uh, to develop uh, uh, patterns yes because uh, now already neuromorphic technology is used for pattern recognition and also to create patterns okay so um that is definitely possible because uh, we know that it is artificial neural network uh, as a software part it is already well developed okay but the artificial uh, neural systems as a hardware part where the transistors just like what we discussed now that is yet to complete yet to come to a mature state the combination of these two artificial neural network uh, technology in the software part together with the artificial real neurons artificial neurons we can expect a lot of uh, advancement in this field okay but the question is that again i was telling uh, before uh, whether we can create an artificial um, uh, consciousness that that is yet to yet to, uh, yet to answer, be achieved uh, in, 
it to be achieved because we haven't done uh, I, um, I, uh, um, one of my very close friend uh, friends is uh, uh, dr rajiv he's he's a senior scientist in oxford university he's a neurophysiologist so we were discussing with him and uh, he was telling that uh, the consciousness part is in even in biology is uh, yet to be understood how this coordination of all this uh, neural activity comes into a picture uh, which is called a consciousness okay intelligence is different intelligence is uh, something you you understand uh, or you take from uh, you take the data and give output that that's we can call intelligence but consciousness is different that part is uh, we, uh, i cannot answer at least uh, at this moment but uh, uh, it will give a lot of intelligence okay uh, in, in in future for example if you if you order something in uh, uber or swiggy or like any online uh, medium you say uh, after ordering it you will get a lot of um, feedback about what, what are your nearest hotels what kind of food uh, they are supplying suppose you order some some uh, some special food and then the system the intelligence system understands that okay you prefer that hotel you prefer that kind of food so it will suddenly give suggestions for uh, all other hotels around you where that type of food or similar food items are are, are given that is that's already the intelligence available in our uh, in our smartphones okay you can you can expect a much more advanced version of that in, in the coming 5 years thank you sir thank you so next question is from shobhavita k ai can lead yeah. to wear and tear is there any possible way that ai can be modified without destructive modes um i don't exactly understand what's the question wear and tear is is basically on uh, uh, is about um, uh, say the reliability issues right so wear and so, yeah yeah that's that's this case uh, so uh, will it like non destructive robots Non -destructive robots is harm to us. Of course, of course, of course. Actually, uh, there are. Um, uh, I mean, this is. Uh, I I would say uh, the most of the AI and in future also will be applicable to um, uh, robotics only. Okay. For example, if you if you want to find out in a in a, in a very um, uh, a very difficult or diff different situations if there is a crack formation, for example, in a uh, in a nuclear power station, for example, or so, so like that. If you want to find out, you have to use. Uh, um uh, i mean uh, reliable and reusable robotics there okay where a human cannot go there a high temperature case for example um, um uh, or a, a highly ra radiation dominant cases like like in a nuclear power station so only robots can uh, 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 go there and and it it can it can um, uh, assess that thing so definitely this is this is applicable anywhere whether it is destructive or non destructive uh, in robotics it is applicable everywhere okay sir thank you sir so next question is from dr v natrajan okay uh, do carbon electronics have any part in neuromorphic technology that is cnt electronic devices may have any role in neuromorphic computer devices absolutely very very interesting question because um, uh, we have shown uh, recently that uh, for example um, uh, graphene or graphene oxide we know graphene itself uh, is a highly conductive or a semi metal but yes, if you yes. add oxygen to it yeah if you add oxygen to it it, it becomes uh, uh, depending upon the concentration of oxygen it becomes semi conducting okay so it can actually even go to even uh, zero uh, band gap to almost a 2 electron volt 2.5 electron volt band gap it can achieve with uh, with respect to oxygen content and the interesting thing is that this oxygen is attached to carbon uh, not with a very high force if you if you just take graphene oxide and put it in in normal sunshine you can get rid of this oxygen so we can easily remove this oxygen from graphene or graphene oxide so depending upon that you can modulate the the, the conductivity of that material so oh. carbon materials are very very active and very good sources for uh, neuromorphic technology so lot of papers are already available uh, regard, regarding that okay sir so next question is from masuda you does humanoids have human sense like tasting and smelling uh basically the the similarity between a humanoid and a human is 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 that uh, they all, we all have senses okay these are all sensors for example yes. uh, how, how do we smell it we have uh, the gas sensors basically miniaturized molecular level gas sensors we have in, in our nose that's why if you go to a room where we have say ammonia we can immediately smell it 
but after some time if you stay in that room you you will you will not uh, uh, smell ammonia because your nose sense is already saturated okay then you have to go outside and come back then you will smell it again yes sir, because yes, sir. because that is that's a biological sensor but in a humanoid it's a, it's more electronic sensor that's that's the only difference okay but uh, the the I, I think the question is whether how uh, how um, uh, it is distinguished okay in a robot it is purely electronic way in in uh, in, in a human uh, brain it's a, it's a biological way okay so you have already seen that uh, i mean um, a, a neuromorphic technology it uses capacitors or um, uh, or transistors there but biological sensor is totally different they have organic molecules uh, like uh, neurotransmitters are exchanging so only the function we are uh, we are uh, imitating not the complete biology itself okay so that that difference so uh, the like yeah. uh, you said okay uh, we'll have to go out of the room, then come back if uh, or when the receptors yeah. reach a saturation level. Does the same happen in the electronic sensors also? Absolutely. In the electronic sensor also is there, you have to refresh the sensor, uh, okay. gas sensor. Okay. So sometimes the people uh, in uh, gas sensors, there is an embedded heater there. Uh, a small uh, tungsten wire, a thin film heater is there. So if you just uh, apply voltage across that heater, it will heat up and it will uh, refresh the sensor. Oh, the, oh. the molecules that are attached there, they will fly away. Okay. So, uh, like that, uh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, next question is from Nekin. Uh, can we produce oxygen from water steam? <laughs> so, so, not related to artificial intelligence, but yes, uh, yes it is possible. It's it's possible, of course. <laughs> okay. But uh, but water steam means I mean no, I mean it's easier to produce oxygen from water than from water steam. I I guess because uh, I, I mean now this um, uh, solar, uh, for example, water splitting method, you, you know. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Need, water splitting. You need uh, yeah, you need the molecules to uh, to come to an electrode to get uh, split up, and that is easier because. Water molecules are polar molecules, but still, it, it will be easier in a in a in a in a liquid phase. I, I that's that's my answer. Okay. In steam phase, I don't know uh, uh, how it, how it works honestly. Okay, sir. Yeah. So next question is from Rishi Vyas. Why is there a difference between positive and negative voltage, 2.5 volts and 2 volts in studying HF based memory stirs, system memory stirs? Uh, can you repeat that question again? Set up some voltages. Yeah. Why is there a difference between positive and negative voltage, 2.5 volts and 2 volts, in studying HF-based system memory stirs? What is this HF-based system memory stir? Sir, I'm not uh, getting this. Sir, can you see the uh, Q and A section? Let me, let, me, let me see. Let me see. Uh, I'll just uh, um, chat. Rishi Vyas, can you please uh, say the question? What is HF based? Rishi Vyas, I have unmuted you. You can speak. Rishi? Is it is it actually high frequency HF? So don't know. Okay, so let's move on to next question. Yeah. So maybe briefly, I, I will I'll say um, that uh, you see if you use uh, two and two. Excuse volts, me. Uh, yeah. yeah. Hello. Yeah, Rish. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning. I was uh, actually talking about slide number twenty-four. Can you please switch over to it so that I can point it out? Uh, let me see twenty-four. Oh, you mean half name oxide HF? Okay. Yeah, so, that's right. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so you can see. Yeah. yeah. The potentiation was at 2.5 volt, while depression was at minus 2 volt. So, is there uh, something behind that that the difference should be there? Uh, okay. So, um, um, that that's just an experimental condition. So, if you use potentiation, because you have to move it out of equilibrium, right? So, because initially. It, it initially it was in uh, manganese oxides were there uh, manganese uh, mm -hmm. ions were here so you have to apply certain voltage to put them push them out of equilibrium because now you are pushing them to go to this electrode so that's why you have to apply slightly larger potential but 
okay. if you just uh, if you just stop it here naturally they will diffuse back okay so that means uh, you you have you don't have to give 2.5 itself you can actually give a slightly lower one they will automatically so it can down. work at lesser voltage even okay. exactly so lesser voltage so if you give okay. larger voltage for example 2.5 this depression will be even larger so it is actually for the sake of this uh, this uh, diagram uh, which, which is given like that okay because okay uh, there was one more question yeah. I, I would i would like to add with this slide uh, yeah. have you ever tried applying mixed frequencies i mean like the one which i applied and there may be some other signal which would have different frequency than if you have tried depression yes that that's a that's a very interesting very good question because uh, you see there is in biology there is a uh, experiment okay so okay. <laughs> that experiment is called uh, pa pavlov p a v l o v pavlov's dogs experiment okay Mm -hmm. So what what that experiment is that that is about uh, the the psychology of a dog. Uh, so what what it what it is is that if you, if you have a dog and if you just bring it food, okay, when when seeing that food, uh, the dog has sa sa salvation. Uh, water water comes yeah. off, saliva comes <laughs> off uh, its mouth. But when you bring the food, suppose you ring a bell also, okay, you you have a bell, you ring that bell. So then what happens? The dog understands that every time the bell rings, the food is coming. So that means. Um, uh, that's a conditioning. The, its brain understands that the, the it, it correlates the bell ringing to, together mm -hmm. with the food. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you give it uh, give the food uh, like that every day, and uh, uh, next day you stop bringing food but only ring the bell. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then you can see that the dog saliv salivates again, even without seeing the food, because uh, it has the memory that um, uh, this bell belongs to food. Okay. So even without food, if you just uh, ring the bell any any time. Suddenly, water the, the saliva comes out of its mouth. Now, electronically, what it means mm -hmm. is that you can give one signal as food, okay, and another signal mm -hmm. as as a bell, and okay. you can mix it and mix it and give it to a, a neural uh, neural memory uh, or a neuron like this. What happens mm -hmm. is that you have you have potentiation. But now, after a certain certain level, you stop one signal and only apply that uh, signal which belongs to the food. You can still that it goes up. Okay. okay, so so that's called the Pavlov's conditioning experiment in generally in in biology. But that, that that's mm -hmm. uh, uh, so definitely your question is very well valid. And uh, now uh, I'm planning for a complete uh, PhD topic as the mixed signals because the mixed signal can be anything. Okay, in a transistor you can give uh, gate voltage as uh, as the food and uh, the drain drain source voltage as the uh, bell. Okay, or the other way around. Or in a resistor, you can give mixer just like you asked. Uh, mixer signals. One is one belongs to foot, another belongs to uh, to to the bell, like that. Mm -hmm. So that's a uh, that's a two-step or or a second-order memory experiment. But definitely, that is that is the next level, which I did not discuss it here because of the time. Okay, thank you, Professor Dinesh. It was a pleasure listening to you all. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your question. Rishi Vyas. Thank you, sir. Sir, move to the next question. Yeah. Next question is from Akhil. If we can replace the brain, the most complex of the organs, with our artificial yeah. brains, is it safe to assume we can replicate other human parts and organs and eventually build cyborgs, human, without an expiration date? <laughs> That's a philosophical question. <laughs> so, the, the the problem is that uh, you have already the most said that, complex. Uh, yeah, the most complex. The the most complex part of the human body is the brain. Okay, you can you can uh, uh, do a pacemaker for your heart, but you cannot do a pacemaker for your brains at, at least until now. Okay, okay. because uh, you see earlier times when people uh, 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 people with the mental problems, they uh, they very crudely give to give shock treatments. Okay. We, we have seen that in several movies, uh, a, very low, a very high voltage is given uh, across the brain or the, or the head. Yes, and sir. Now, nowadays, I, I think that is not given, but sometimes it used to reset your brain. Okay, but how it reset your brain is uh, there's no answer so far. Okay, so, so that's like a breakdown experience. Sometimes it, it works out, sometimes it worsens the situation. That means you can influence from outside how a brain can work. Uh, in my knowledge, uh, what we have come so far to the most uh, advanced level is that um, uh, for a, a, a person who cannot see, okay, the, the, uh, the, using some sensors, uh, people have shown that giving, uh, giving the signal from a sensor to visual cortex, uh, that person can identify black and white 
uh, a little bit of shade shade like uh, images and he could even drive we have reached only to that far okay we cannot replace a human brain that is uh, that will be yeah okay <laughs> sir that, okay, is, that sir. is the central central part of the of the system okay, that, yes, that controls everything in our body so uh, replacing a human brain is only a, at, at the moment it is only a philosophical question okay so uh, are we able to uh, transplant that to, to some other body um that also i have no idea because uh, okay, okay. Uh, how, how that may be i i think that may be the first step before uh, before replacing the, the, with, it with artificial with electronic yeah with the electronic brain yeah, yes. artificial intelligence to destroy <laughs> so next question is from uh, shri sorana bika uh, yeah. semiconducting devices plays a major role in artificial intelligence is it absolutely yeah yeah absolutely okay uh, next question is from niketa what are the challenges yeah. of using re ram and thank you for your wonderful session mm -hmm. uh, i think uh, I, i think the last slide uh, i i showed all the possibilities of using re rams right i mean there it can go from uh, uh, data storage to artificial intelligence to display technology to wearable technology to cryptography anywhere okay so in all these cases uh, neuromorphic technology and re ram can play a role now the thing is that uh, you see currently how we are uh, probably you know how your flash drive or the thumb drive works it is a it's a transistor okay every bit is a transistor for example uh, 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 suppose you you are you are saving a 5 mb film song in your thumb drive 5 mb means what 5 into m is mega that's a 10 raised to 6 into b uh, one uh, byte is 8 bits let's assume so 8 bit so 8 into 5 into 10 raised to 6 that means uh, 40 times 10 raised to 6 40 million transistors you are programming when you are saving a 5 mb film film song in your uh, thumb drive okay that that is that that much uh, uh, so every transistor has to be has to have that speed also okay because otherwise it will take uh, enormous time to save a data so the fundamental thing here is that it should uh, in in a memory technology is that it should be miniaturizable at the same time the the programming speed should be very fast okay so if you in this case for example if you are applying a nanosecond vol voltage pulse it should be able to to create uh, it should be able to 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 uh, uh, to move this uh, 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 or change the state of this device from uh, from a normal device to a conducting device okay so we, we we are talking about pulses of nano a couple of nanoseconds here no okay okay, okay so, sir yeah 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 so next question is from uh, kirtan dikshit he is yes. asking how to train weights of such application where you mentioned bicycle and car you mean uh, weights means uh, like, weight of the so if we are uh, you said na like uh, the car the cycle will follow you yeah and it, it can also stand on one wheel so how how to train the mechanism with weights Oh, okay okay so um, i mean we have sensors well the sensor technology is well well, well developed okay the sensor technology is already well developed uh, so we have to to know whether there is a vehicle in front you have a uh, proximity sensor for waiting weighing also you have gyroscopes there uh, and if you if you want to see orientations for example if the bicycle is is just a uh, uh moving or or falling in one direction it can actually compensate uh, with, with the weight on the other side that that mechanism is totally that's mechanical that that part i cannot comment how how to do that but the okay. sensing mechanism is using gyroscopes basically and the we are now talking about the electronics part of it because the the signal coming from gyroscope can actually uh, intelligently intelligently uh, uh, evaluated and say uh, and say that uh, this cycle is going to to fall now then accordingly a mechanical system has to be there to repl to compensate that to and balance to that steady yeah that that's how the robotics works right i mean uh, ro robots stand uh, even on one leg yes sir so, yes sir <laughs> so so that that's uh, all about it so gyroscopes are the main uh, thing because we also use uh, in space technology gyroscopes a lot because we have to send the satellites uh, to the orbits and then we have to orient the satellites in a particular direction so from 4000 kilometers away we have to see one meter resolution uh, in a, in a place so gyroscopes are the thing which which uh, enable that okay sir gyroscopes yeah yeah so next question is from rahul sir heard yeah. a lot about changing future world drastically with parallel computing 
but how will parallel computing help when the time taken to perform some series of tasks should be seen in series of parallel ah so i think i just answered that question before we are talking about nanosecond processing time mm. yeah that's why uh, any any material or every material is not usable for this technology for example the time at which when you are applying a nanosecond pulse here for example just a single nanosecond pulse how far these ions will move in that uh, through that for example how far this uh, manganese ions will move uh, in hafnium oxide that will determine whether uh, a single pulse can change the system or not if uh, if you want to if if this pos uh, movement of ions is possible only with a microsecond pulse that technology is not useful because every device we have to spend micro microseconds which means that uh, for 10 raised to 6 uh, devices 10 raised to 6 into 1 micron and micron microsecond is 10 raised to minus 6 seconds so 10 raised to 6 uh, devices just a one, a one million devices will take one second Okay, so okay. so a uh, five MB data will will take a forty seconds to to write. That's that's not feasible. So it will take a long time uh, if the time scale is uh, too large. That's why material with with a very short uh, uh, time responses are suitable for this technology. Okay, sir. Sir, next question. Okay, Nikhilish. Sir, there is a last question. Yes. Nikhilish. Yes, sir. There is a last question. Okay, okay. Carry on. Okay. last question carry on last question is from wasim ashraf sir what is the potential inside the neuron uh, potential inside the neuron is 7 uh, <laughs> uh, i think it is uh, let me see minus 70 millivolt okay minus so 70. it's a very interesting minus 70 millivolt because now uh, an action potential comes and if it goes beyond minus 55 millivolt then that action potential will trigger to the next for example all these ions ionic uh, with respect to the membrane these uh, neurons are at a minus 7 minus 70 okay 70 minus 70 millivolt and if it if if a action potential comes and if it goes beyond minus 55 millivolt then that action potential will will be transferred to the next step pulse that's why every sense every time when you touch you, you may not know it okay and uh, only when the touch is uh, when you say that okay i i am sensing that touch that means uh, that action potential goes beyond 55 minus 55 millivolt now you see it has it has a lot of things to do with uh, even uh, um uh, this uh, epilepsy okay when when this uh, potential abruptly changes people get a, a, a epileptic seizure epilepsy there okay so it's very very accurately maintained this uh, uh, minus 75 millivolt potential okay sir thank you sir thank you very much for the uh, session The, thank those, you those the all the all of the questions <laughs> thank you and uh, thanks for all the questions and uh, i i would like to thanks once again uh, uh, professor shah and uh, and uh, nikhil also for this uh, wonderful opportunity to discuss with the uh, with the students i think uh, discussing with the students is the most wonderful thing because mm-hmm. yeah we yes. are the future we are <laughs> of the technology okay yeah. sir sir now i would like to introduce uh, our professor hakirat singh Uh, to say a word of thanks for the today session dr hakirat is working as an assistant professor at department of physics nit shrinagar dr singh has did his phd in year 2014 from Inter- indian institute of science education and research kolkata in the field of quantum information processing after his phd he joined tata institute of fundamental research mumbai for his postdoc research on the melting of superconducting vortex lattice using scanning tunneling microscope till 2017 dr singh is presently working on quantum information processing superconducting systems as well as magnetic nanostructures dr singh has got publications over um, more than 20 papers in highly reputed journals professor hakira hakira sir thank you nikhilesh Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Nikhil. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, yeah, with immense uh, gratitude. <laughs> Doctor Akirat, uh, we are listening. We are. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. So it, it's it's really a, a really very informative talk, and with the immense gratitude and happiness, I would like to thank the, today's speaker, Professor Jinesh, from IST Trivandrum. 
uh, your your talk is really really very informative and uh, and the way you have answered patiently all the questions it, it's really commendable thank you so much thank you uh, my word of thanks would be incomplete if i don't mention the efforts put by professor shah for organizing such a short term course it, it, it's really it's really beneficial i feel and i'm feel i feel the same is for the participants that it's it's really wonderful and beneficial uh so many thanks to professor shah and his team and uh, sp uh, especially mr nikhilesh for smoothly conducting uh, this uh, workshop uh at last i sincerely thank uh, the participants for attending this short term course i'm sure uh, this program will be of immense help and a great learning experience so uh, I, i'm sure uh, this kind of uh, short term course will be conducted in future by professor shah as well so he is he's one of the very enthusiastic uh, faculty from our department so i must say this so with all these <laughs> words uh, i thank, thank the, the organizers and the speaker once again for their efforts and time thank you so much professor jinesh thank and you. professor shah thank you, thank you very thank much thank you nikhilesh over thank to you, you. Thank you very much, sir. Hmm. Dr. Professor Janesh. Professor Janesh. <laughs> yes, sir. Professor Janesh. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Uh, please accept my thanks also. Please accept my gratitude also. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Also mine uh, for for inviting. Uh, yeah, me. this is uh, this is really this is really a rarest of a rare. Can we hear? Uh, can we hear something from a student? Uh, uh, the direction uh, will will listen to the students how they felt it yeah, yeah, yeah. okay sir okay sir and you, and you can give it honestly because uh, i mean direction <laughs> is direction is she connected yes sir yes sir yes sir. Yeah, please I'm say what you are yeah good please afternoon please say your experience Yes, sir. So, wow! I must say that was indeed an informative session for all of us. We are like really blessed to have such an amazing personality with all of us. And I would like to thank our speaker who honored us with such valuable information. Thank you so much, sir. We are we are like highly obliged and grateful to you for such an amazing session. Believe me, all through this session, I was I was entirely hooked to my screen because you made it so very interesting. and our chat box is filled with all kinds of praises for this lecture and we really find ourselves luckier if in future like you spare some time for us and deliver such some more informative lectures on artificial intelligence i on behalf of whole team of nit srinagar all the peers and patrons and our shah sir our hod everyone i would like to thank you we are we are really Highly obliged to you. We owe you all the gratitude, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much for the nice words. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> she's our she's our first year student, okay. and okay. 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 since okay. I have been teaching the semiconductors, oh, right. so uh, it gave me a, something like that. How the world has changed. Right. Right. It was introduced to me in ninety five or nineteenth. So okay. up from ninety up to two thousand one. How this semiconductor world has changed. Changed. Exactly. So I decided to have a short-term course, inviting right, right. all great people like you. And I was never knowing that this such a rarest of a rare combination does exist: physics and an electrical engineer, physics oh, and you. a mechanical engineer, physics and a chemical engineer. I know there are many. There are many uh, U.S. projects. Projects, UK projects, exactly. they fund on this yeah, one yeah. Uh, neurosciences. Exactly. Neurosciences. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I have always been telling my student that why this brain remains. It is probably out of hundred per it is seven or eight percent a human being can utilize his brain. Exactly. The rest exactly. of the brain remains dormant. Rest. Exactly. Why exactly. to so? Yeah. Why not to work on these issues? Exactly. Exactly. So uh, yeah. uh, God has made a complete <laughs> man exactly. or a woman. Why not? To, why not to utilize this whole brain right. altogether? Yeah. Now, blessed with the technologies, artificial intelligence is coming up. Right. Nanotechnology right. is coming up. Yeah. And then many more good things may come up. 
Exactly. So hopefully exactly. we all will be benefited. Is there any Absolutely. is there any one participant who can speak a word or something like that one? Is there anyone who can say whom we can or shall we say goodbye to all of you for today? Naklesh, make a formal goodbye. Okay, sir. <laughs> Hmm. Thank you, Professor Dinesh. Uh, thank you, sir, for uh, giving such a, a tremendous and informative session. Thank you very much we, on, from our uh, whole department on behalf of Professor Shah, on behalf of our professors, on behalf of thank our uh, delegates. Thank you, sir. Yeah, we take you. a uh, leave from, from now. Yeah, sure. sure. Okay, sir. okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Naklesh, be blessed. Naklesh. Darakshan, thank you, Darakshan. Keep it up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The participants are uh, informed that our uh, today's second session will be held tomorrow from 3 to 4. The notification will be sent to you all uh, in the mail. I suppose that you all have uh, filled the uh, feedback form for day two. If not, please uh, comment on or tell me, inform me in the chat box so that I can provide you the links again. <clears throat> Those who have uh, submitted the feedback form, please, uh, you, you all may leave. We were about to have Rehana Khanna. We were about to have the second session, but due to our speaker is stuck somewhere, he could not join us. Next session will be tomorrow. So same timing, 11 to 12, then 12 to 1, then 3 to 4. Uh, sorry, uh, participants, I cannot share yesterday's feedback link because it has been closed. You please uh, do the feedback for fill the feedback form for today. We'll consider all the all days attendance. <clears throat> there is a feedback form. I have shared the link in the chat box. Please. Look at look to it.
feedback link for today here. Sri Sornambika KSS. What you want? Thank you, thank you. For the PPTs, I'll ask the professors if they'll allow to share their PPTs. Otherwise, uh, we have the recordings of all the sessions that we'll put on YouTube of our NIT channel that will be shared to you all who have attended, who don't have attended, to everyone in mail. Yeah, feedback link is the feedback about, okay. It's not required. You can put in nil for Professor Sajad Ahmed loan. Because we don't have his session, we didn't have his session, you can put nil. Okay, we will take your suggestions. We'll consider them for future sessions. A few of the PPTs co uh, contain their personal data that they have produced working in their labs. So they have that copyright. And if they share it publicly, then anyone might use it. So we'll have to ask for the permission for the PPTs, then only we can share. Please fill in the feedback form and leave. We have got 203 feedbacks. There were 233 or 290 participants for today. We don't have any further lecture for today. We'll start with the next session tomorrow. The lecture of Professor Sajad Ahmed Lone will be followed by the uh, sessions tomorrow. I'll brief you in the mail. Professor Sajad was in Delhi, so he was he is traveling. Yeah, that will be shared to you in the mail. Don't worry about that. Please fill in the feedback and leave the session.
will put the recorded lectures on YouTube. Don't worry, you can access them through YouTube. Day one feedback link is closed. Please fill today's feedback. All feedbacks will be considered for certification. You all are requested to fill in the feedback form and leave the session. So that I can close.